three, two, one, go. Here we go. Leaning. Whoa, he's just taking off. I am leaning. And I got the haptic feedback and he is still going. All right, so this just came in the mailbox. I've unboxed a lot of one wheels in my day and I'm excited about this because this is a huge leap forward compared to all the other one wheel releases. 113 volts, a top speed of 25 miles an hour. That is huge. This is the GTS series. This is their high performance one wheel. They've used double-sided tape now instead of that really goopy stuff that's so hard to get off. All right, so styled very much like the One Wheel GT. What do you think? It's like choosing out a watermelon. What's up guys? Jimmy here with Andrew. Welcome back to Freshly Charged. In today's video, we are going over the One Wheel, a race wheel. It's a high performance wheel. It is an expensive wheel. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about why would anyone pay $900 more, almost $1,000 more for what looks like the same wheel. This thing has some pretty sweet upgrades that we're gonna talk about. Then we're gonna take it on the road to see if we can feel the differences. What are those differences? The biggest thing being, it's got a new drivetrain it's got an electric drivetrain that's 113 volts. 113 volts is pretty significant. The GT was at 75 volts. Before that, we had the XR, the Pint, and the Pint X. Those all had 63 volt drivetrains, but such a huge leap from 75 volts to 113. I mean, at that point, you're talking EUC level power. This has got to be the safest one wheel ever made. And in my opinion, that's why I would be willing to pay the extra money for a safer one wheel. Disclaimer, no amount of power and no safety feature will keep some of us from pushing things way too far. Please ride responsibly and listen to the warning signals from your one wheel, otherwise this will happen. Congrats to this humble savage for a new speed record, I guess. I'm not a big off-road rider. I do like to go on a little bit of light single tracks. Um, because I'm a heavier rider, I like the bigger margin of error due to higher power. Even though on the outside it looks very similar, the insides is what they've changed. The power that this has can give you the torque now to feel confident when you're going up those steep hills. At least that's what they say. And we're gonna take this out here in just a sec to see our thoughts, see Andrew's thoughts. I've actually already been on this with my family and I'll tell you what we think about this in a sec. The tire is a softer compound. This is deeper treading and these aren't quite as thick and not quite as wide, but they look more aggressive, almost like a sport bike. But already I can tell just with my hands, it's a lot softer. This tire right here, it's pretty stiff. One of the other changes on the GT and on the Pint, the edge on these foot pads was really harsh. You can see that steep edge it makes it sharp. So that kind of digs into your, your shoe. And here they've softened that. They've rounded that out a little bit. So not nearly as steep. The foot pads are actually lower. So your stance is gonna be five millimeters lower. So half a centimeter lower than on the GT being lower to the ground. That's gonna help with your center of gravity and your stance and stability. We've talked about the insides being a little different. It makes it lighter. This is two pounds lighter. When you pick up both of these wheels, it's obviously lighter. That's especially important for people that are riding trails, that are into doing tricks and stunts. The weight makes a difference. The thing that kind of took me away from one wheel for a while, there were times where I felt like I was pushing the motor to the limits, even though I wasn't going too fast. The increased power from the 113 volt powertrain system to the new controller, the stronger motor, you have that power to give you more of a buffer so that you can ride up to 18, 20 miles an hour, a nice decent speed to be riding a one wheel and not be worried about a cutoff. The biggest selling point for me, if you're someone who doesn't do tricks and who doesn't ride off road, why would you consider getting a one wheel GTS? Well, for me, the answer is simple. The S doesn't stand for speed, the S stands for safety. All right, we're gonna do a free wheel spin test. Let's see how fast we can get this guy going. 40, it says 40. 37? Yeah, 37. We're gonna get our safety gear on and we're gonna go rip around and tell you guys what we think about this wheel. 
Okay, we're out here riding, and I am on the GT. Andrew's on the GTS series. We're cruising down this road and having a grand old time. I'm trying to keep up with Andrew, and then I started getting some of that haptic feedback telling me that I'm going too fast. I'm getting close to nose diving, but what speed were you able to hit? I was at 22 and a half. Oh, that still has that tail stop. Yeah, right there, if you saw, even though that this has increased power, when you go off of curbs, you still get that tail slap effect, which is kind of obnoxious. I do wish that they would have fixed that. So there's something about the one wheel that you can't replicate in any of the other PEVs. A ton of fun. One of the big drawbacks on the one wheel though is it doesn't go very fast. If you've been riding EUCs or high powered scooters or high powered e-bikes, you're used to going 30, maybe even 40 miles an hour. And on the GT, even though the GT is you know, last year's flagship, you could still hit about 20, 21, 22, but I'm getting the haptic buzz every now and then. And that's kind of a buzz kill, actually, knowing that, man, I can't go as fast. But then Andrew just takes off on the GTS. Pretty impressive. What are your thoughts, Andrew? I like it. I like the increased power. I can absolutely feel the torque. Let's keep pushing forward through it. Yeah, look at that. That would have been beeping right there. A lot of times if you don't have enough momentum going into a steep part, your one wheel will either die on you or it'll just slide out. And that was very interesting that I could actually hold it at the steepest part, still keep it engaged and climb up the hill. So actually I want to see you do this with just the regular GT. Okay. Engaged and... Yeah, see I'm trying to like balance it out. Yeah. And yeah, right there, we'll make That's it up there. Said. I will say, I've, run, I've ridden this path multiple times on the one wheel, and every time climbing up that little hill, the one wheel struggles, not the GTS. It, it crushes hills with ease that would have eaten up prior one wheels. So this is, this is really cool. I love the confidence that it gives me while I'm riding. We got Andrew on the GTS, the racing series, then me on the OG GT, and we're gonna see at what speed we feel haptic feedback. Three, two, one, go! Here we go! Seven, leaning, 12, whoa, 15, he's just taking off! 16, I'm leaning! And I got the haptic feedback, and he is still going. Andrew just hit the top speed, the fastest he's ever gone on a one wheel, 25 miles an hour, over 25 miles an hour, and how did it feel? Felt solid, and um, surprising for me was that I didn't really have a lot of stress factor. A lot of times when I'm riding the one wheel, without the haptic feedback, it's kind of nerve wracking because you're having to pay attention to speed. I've broken my clavicle on it. Even when you're not going top speed, but you're going up a hill, you can feel that it's about to lose power. So I like that the haptic feedback works on the top speed, but also warns you when you're at a low battery current as well. Now that future motion and one wheel has been working with the CPSC, the one wheel is it's faster, it's better, and it's safer. And because you have this haptic feedback and a pretty good pushback, for someone like me who rides on the weekend, rides for fun with the family, lets my kids ride it, lets my friends ride it, I want something safe. And I feel like this, the One Wheel GTS series, it's the safest one wheel ever. The One Wheel GTS, it's got a compelling story. It's expensive, but you get what you pay for. What I feel like you're getting with the GTS is that you're gonna prevent a lot of clavicles from breaking. There's not gonna be that over torquing when you're going up hills. Um, it's got the haptic feedback so it can warn users audibly and physically. And those same safety features have also been implemented in the Pint, in the Pint X, the One Wheel XR, and in the GT. But the GTS can do something that other one wheels cannot and that is hit a top speed of 25 miles an hour comfortably. Even more important for someone like Andrew because he's going to be a dad soon, right? He's going to have a kid coming and he can't afford to break his clavicle again while riding the one wheel because he's got to be able to hold that baby and rock it to sleep. The concave foot pads feel a lot better. On the GT, it just kind of hurts my feet because I have flat and fat feet and I do like that these 
foot pads aren't as aggressive on the edges. But it's, it's not perfect. There are some drawbacks to this device. Let's go right over to another spot and talk about the things that uh, we're not super excited about this wheel. All right, let's talk about the things that we're not digging with the One Wheel GTS series. For me, the biggest thing is the price point. For that price, you can get an EUC that goes 60 miles per hour, has 100 miles of range, high powered electric scooter that can go 60 miles per hour and 40 miles worth of range, and almost a Suron for that price. So you can get a lot of things for $3,200 where this one, you're gonna get a max of 25 miles per hour and a range of, what was it, like 18 miles of range? But as we talked about, this is a ride feel that you can't replicate with any other personal electric vehicle. The other thing is this was tail slapping on me just going down that small set of stairs that are spread out. So the torque is great for going up hills, but when you're just going off of a curb, you still get that little bit of a tail slap, which is very annoying. And I thought they would have solved that by increasing the power output. The mag handle, still makes a weird rattling noise when you're going off of curbs or hitting bonks. And last but not least is the right to repair. I understand why people are frustrated at it, but I also understand future motion stance where if they leave it up to people to fix their own items and the self-balancing unit fails due to failure of fixing it correctly, uh, they're open to legal lawsuits against them. So ultimately, I'd love to be able to fix my own one wheel, but I do understand where they're coming from. Choosing between the two-year-old One Wheel GT and the new GTS series is like choosing between the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The GTS series is clearly better in just about every way except for a little bit of range loss and its big price tag. But ultimately, both of these newer generation One Wheels are incredibly fun. The question is though, why should someone consider getting the One Wheel GTS series? If safety is more important than money to you, this is the wheel to get. It's tough to put a price on safety, especially when it comes to me and my loved ones. I would pay the extra money to have the extra safety margin and to be able to go a little bit faster. Check out our full review at freshlycharged.com and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.